Welcome to Finding Holiness, where we delve into timeless Torah wisdom, revealing the sacred in everyday moments. Join us on a journey to elevate your spirituality and discover holiness in every aspect of life. I'm your host, Rabbi David Kadosh, and together, let's embark on a path of spiritual exploration. I hope you enjoy this next episode. Purim Sameach, everybody. Again, on behalf of my uh, of my wife and my family, uh, it is uh, an honor and a privilege to have everybody here again. And, um, you know, the, it, it is one, probably the best three hours of the year for me. It's, uh, you know, people coming in and out, in and out. Um, but you guys stuck in there, a lot of you stuck in there till the end. And uh, you get to hear the Divrei Torah. And um, Bezat Hashem will do Mincha afterwards. But uh, again, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for coming and uh, making this such a, a very, very um, uplifting, special, special uh, powerful day as it is. Um, I, I wanted to share with you something that really is... You know, sometimes you don't need to hear the greatest chidush, the greatest novelty to, to make an impact to your lives. Now, at the conclusion of the, of the story of the Megillah, the Gemara tells us that Esther Amalka, he, she sent a letter, she sent a message, you know, she sent a WhatsApp message to all the members of the Sanhedrin. And she says, uh, Rabbis, dear Rabbis, Kiv'oni le dorot, I want you to establish this story, what just happened to us. I want you to establish this miracle as a holiday for future generations. I want the Jewish people to read the Megillah every single year, and more than that, I wanted to be part of the Tanakh. Let's not forget that really this was not supposed to be part of the Tanakh. It was the last book added to scripture. And she said, she insisted, I want Megillat Esther to be part of the Tanakh. What's going on here? Well, what is, what is Esther Amalka looking for? She's looking for kavod, for honor, hasu shalom. So what exactly? She's like demanding. I want this to be part of Tanakh. The stories are great. The stories are personal. But it seemed like the Tanakh was already ratified. Imagine like I get up in, in this room and I say, I want everybody in this room from now on to celebrate my birthday on the 17th of October. Everybody has to make a seuda on, on my birthday. And you're, like, you're crazy. Why am I going to make a seuda on your birthday? I'll so drink so uh, you drink to that? Okay, no problem. Yeah, but what, yeah. what's Esther all of a sudden saying? I, I, keep only le dorot. I want everybody to make this a, 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 a moment in time from now ad, uh, ba'ed, until the end of days. Why is it? Why is it? That's not how it works. Why is she asking the Megillah to be written for future generations? Esther wanted Am Yisrael to see what she went through and learn from it. By learning through the lessons of what took place in her life, she figured that our emunam, our bitachon HaKadosh Baruch Hu will increase and will never give, uh, give up hope. Uh, it starts with Esther. It starts with her, an orphan from birth, alone, the only man who had any interest in Esther Amalka was Mordechai. As an infant, she had no parents. She had nobody even to nurse her. Says that Tosfot Yeshanim, an unbelievable chidush, a one-time miracle happened, that Vayhi Omen et Hadasa. What does it mean, Vayhi Mordechai Omen et Hadasa? Mordechai nursed Esther Amalka. Mordechai nursed as a male nurse. By the way, I, I heard that there were scientific studies based on this Midrash to see if indeed men can nurse. And supposedly, there, there were times that men are able to nurse. This was a chidush written in Tosfot Yishanim. Otherwise, how does she survive? She has no parents. She has no, the, only, the only relative she had was Mordechai. She, and of course, we know that Mordechai ends up marrying her. Then you have the unpredictable death of Vashi, advised by a horse keeper, okay? Only so that Esther takes the throne. How does this happen? Ahasuerus slept with over 1,400 women. 1,400 women, says the Midrash. This is how many women he went through. You know, you read the, you read the Megillah. Uva giyator na'ara v'na'ara is azla gerish. Azla gerish means, what? Back and forth. Back and forth. That's, that's, how, that's how every na'ara came to Ahasuerus. One by one like this. Um, uh, one after the other. Then comes Esser's turn. <laughs> Esther's turn, to, what, what's the time? Uva giyat to reser batavichayil. Pasek. Pasek, meaning what? Don't bring me. Esther said, I don't want to go. 
Stop! Ah, no, no, leave me, leave me over here. Right? She doesn't want to go with the hospitals. She had a green complexion, says the Gemara. She was old. Look at all the beautiful young maidens. You're taking me. Esther fought back. No, leave me where I am. She tied herself to the bed until the messengers of the king came and picked her up and forcefully took her. She but never. Why, why, why weren't they taking virgins only for the for the king? What so, so, I, 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 right, what so, 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 that wants to annihilate the Jews. And she says, I want everybody to fast me for three days. Why? Because I'm going in. If I perish, I perish. The Midrash writes, Avati, that I went in to be with Ahasuerus, and Avati, that I'm going to bear a son from him. We forget about what the future of Esther looked like. Esther stayed with Ahasuerus after this story. She had a son from this evil Rasha. Look at my matzav. Look at my situation. Look at what I went through. My husband was the head of the Sanhedrin, the Mordechai, and now I'm married to this evil man, and I'm going to have a son with him. But I didn't give up. I had trust in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I am. I was the messenger to bring the Geulah to Am Yisrael. So yes, he says the Sanhedrin, Kivuni Dorot. I want you to write for generations my story that when we are in difficult times, I don't want you to give up. I want you to be machazik be'emunam. The Gemara tells us, and of course, line that we sing, adam that when the month of Adar comes in, we increase our happiness. So Chachamim asks, why Adar? It would make a lot more sense to be a marbim esimcha ben Nisan. Think about Nisan. You have Pesach, you have the 10 plagues, you have Kiryat Yamsu, Yetziat Mitzrayim. That would be the best. You know, what what better month? Marbim esimcha than the month of Nisan. The answer is, we lug the weight of our lives uh, wherever we go. We carry it with us. And it isn't easy. Our parnasa, it's not easy. Our home is not easy. Our shiduchim for those that gotta get married are not easy. Are not easy. Some some of our children sometimes they give us difficult times. If somebody comes and tells us, ah, don't worry, it's all going to be okay. You know why I know it's all going to be okay? Because Hashem split the sea. Because Hashem uh, brought ten plagues on on the on the Egyptians. You're gonna look at this guy and go say, what are you crazy? All right, Hashem splits the sea. Where does he split the sea nowadays? That's a crazy mirror. Hashem's gonna split the sea for me. He's not gonna split the sea for me. So why are you compare? Why are you telling me this? Because that 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 miracle happened once in history. Hashem is not being kore ayamsu for me. So Nisan doesn't work to be marbim besimcha. But in the month of Adar, we read the Megillah. We read where you don't find Hashem's name once in the Megillah. Everything seems natural. Only at the end. When you think all is done, do we see how everything worked out? It's from this month that we draw our strength, that we draw uh, the ability to outlast any difficulty that we have in our lives. There's a very famous story once said of the Klausenberger Rebbe, Zecher Sadiq Libracha. He once entered the car of his shamash, and he noticed that there were two steering wheels in the car. There was a steering wheel, the traditional steering wheel on the left, and there was also a traditional steering wheel on the right. And no, they were not in uh, in England where they where they drive on the on the right side. But this is what he saw. So he goes to the shamash and says, I don't understand. What's going on? Why do you have two steering wheels here in the car? So he answered him and goes, you know, I have a son, and my son is not mentally well. He's scared, you know, he, he's just not 100% over there, and he always has his dream to drive. But I know that he's never going to be able to drive because he doesn't have the mental ability to drive. So you know what I do? I put, I installed a fake steering wheel on the right side, and I have him sit in the front seat. And then I make him pretend that he's driving. And I tell him, turn right. And he starts turning right while I turn right at the same time. And I tell him, turn left. And then he starts turning left to make him feel good. But really, I'm the one, I'm the one driving. That's what I do to make him feel good. At that point, the Klausenberger Rebbe, who was sitting in the back seat, he started crying. He started bawling his eyes out. Like, he, like really overwhelmed. Shamash looks at him and he says, I understand, Rebbe, why, why are you crying? What's going on over here? He says, you know, I live my entire life thinking that I'm the one who's walking, that I'm the one who's working, and I'm the one who's doing what I do. But in reality, I'm no different than your son. I'm not doing anything. Hashem is the one that is directing me and making me feel good. And, 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 it got, and, and it took him over. He said, I'm not, I'm not in control of anything. Hashem is the one that is directing me in life. Hashem plans everything. That's the Megillah. That's the Purim story. There's no name of Hashem. Everything seems natural. But in the end, we see that Hashem is pulling the strings from above. He's playing chess. He's moving pieces 
around so that everything works out. What's the proof? Look at Haman. He planned everything. He even got the, the 50 Amot piece of wood. He went to Noah's Ark. He went to Tebat Noah to find that 50 piece. He was sure, guaranteed, I'm going to hang Mordechai over there on the, uh, on, the, on the gallows. There's no way he's done. Right? He planned to take all that. And what happened? Nothing. All fell through. And Esed, the opposite. She had no clue what was happening. Mordechai is crying out in the middle of the, of the courtyard, in the middle of, the, of Times Square over there. He's screaming his head off because he thinks you're going to be annihilated. No idea what's going to happen. The Midrash says, that what was Esther doing? She was burning the Hametz before Pesach. This whole thing happened. The three-day fast was over Pesach. She was burning Hametz. She had no clue what was going to happen. But that's what the lesson is. Our Hishtadlut does not actually cause success. It's necessary, but success in life is Ratzon HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Because our success is on the will of Hashem. Many people face challenges in life. We all face challenges in life. But the ones who break are not the ones who were broken by difficulty, but the ones who draw conclusions. Those conclusions are the biggest tragedy. If, if, if present day is difficult, you have to know and you have to believe that any challenge, any difficulty, any tsa'ar, any yagon, any anacha is keheref ayin. It passes through with a blink of an eye. In one moment, things can flip. In one moment, you can go from a vashi to an esed. In one moment, you can go from a haman to a mordechai, where haman's house, his whole house, is given to mordechai. Why was it given to mordechai? What, what kesher did mordechai have with haman's house? It was the first thing that Esther did after they won. They go, here, I am mordechai, you get haman's house. You want haman's house? Anybody want haman's house? No, because in haman's house, Haman had all the lists of the people who belonged to Amalek in all the 127 countries. Yeah, right. And therefore, they had to give Haman's house to Mordechai so he can pick point. No, exactly. I got to go to that address, that address, that address. And that's where I'm going to go kill the people because they, all belong, they belong to Amalek. So it says Esther Amalka, give only the Dorot. This is the message that Esther Amalka wanted to impart, not just for all generations, but for all the generations come after. Yehidatzon, we take this opportunity, this Purim, to increase our Emunah in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to increase our Torah and Misfot, to not just sit back and live peacefully, to go to Minyan every single morning, right? to come to Shul, to come to Bet Knesset every Shabbat, Bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just when the weather is good. We come to listen to our Torah class. Rabotai, it's going to change your life. You come to learn Torah, it's going to change your life. It's going to flip your tzarot to brachot. May we be zochet to share this. Many more special moments together next year. Bezat Hashem. Yushalayim irakodesh. Amen. Amen.